So Jill, there's an awesome inform- awesome project that you wanted yes. to bring up. So what is that? Tell us tell us about that. So, you know, there's been so many Linux distros moving away from the Xorg display server to Wayland. As a result of that, there are bound to be new alternatives for running X11 application on desktops. Way back is one of those alternatives and looks quite promising. When I heard way back, I'm, I'm thinking of the way back machine on the Internet the Archive. Thing. Yep. <laughs> but you know, Jill, when people say way back now, they're thinking of like our childhood. When kids this generation are thinking like, man, way back in the day, they're thinking when we were kids now. I'm like, yeah. no, way back in Thanks. the days, like 1800 or, yes, yeah. or 54 true. BC. <laughs> or, like, or like or like a hundred years ago, like the 1920s or something like that now. Yeah. But like it's it's funny because of the whole like vintage now means 90s. And it's, yeah. uh, it makes me <laughs> <that X> has <laughs> happened. <laughs> Sorry, Jill. This has nothing to do with what Wayback is, but the name is cool. And so it just it makes me It is a good think. name, though. It is a good well, name. I just look at it. It's Wayland back. So Wayland, uh, pre Wayland supporting, you know, yeah. old. It's bring, bringing yeah. back things to Wayland. It's really, yeah. it's, it's a good name, but it also is. it does remind me of sadness with the yes. vintage <laughs> big 90s. Yes. Kids these so, days. Oh, get off so, my lawn, kids. Yeah. <laughs> oh, my God. For me, it's the 70s. So <laughs> get off my lawn. <laughs> That's way, way back. <laughs> That's way, way back. OK, so way back is actually an experimental Wayland compositor that supports X Wayland, allowing X apps to run on Wayland without a full X server. And it is designed to bridge the gap between X desktops and Wayland. And it allows X11 applications and desktop environments like Cinnamon or XFCE to run on Wayland by hosting a rootful X Wayland instance. Hmm, that's awesome. That's basically yeah. tasting the, uh, taking the idea of X Wayland, which was kind of made for just applications. And yeah. then pushing it a little bit forward so you can have the desktop environments that are not like cinnamon and XFCE are being built to support Wayland at some point, but they aren't yet. But there are some that have specifically said that they have no intention of porting it to Wayland like I3. Like the mm-hmm. reason why Sway exists is because it's basically a Wayland version of I3 because they, the developers of I3 didn't want to do that. So in a way, if this works, I know it's experimental, but if this works, which would be very cool, you could just run x11 related stuff on top of this and still have everything running if you wanted it yeah absolutely connell who is one of the original developers behind alpine linux is leading way back and it aims to replace xorg in alpine linux and maintain compatibility with classic x desktops like xfce cinnamon lxde and fvwm it has the potential for broader adoption as a safety valve for users who still rely on classic X desktops. I am using Window Maker right now using X Wayland on my podcasting rig, rig to record Destination Linux, but I have used Rat Poison, Flexbox, Ice Window Manager, XFCE, Blackbox, Enlightenment, TWM, and the list goes on and on. Almost all of every, them. Yeah, I have used all of them. What about i3? <laughs> Have you used? I, I have actually, and the okay, awesome good. desktop, <laughs> and and also of course Joe's Joe's. Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. Uh, Joe's is classic. JWM for those who don't know, it's yeah. Joe's Window Manager. Yeah. Amazing. JWM is awesome, and so in fact, actually, that was like the third or fourth episode of <laughs> that I recorded with DL. I used Joe's. <laughs> oh yeah. Yeah. And also a lot of people who use Puppy have, have used JWM because it's like, it was a standard for Puppy for a long time. It was. You're exactly right. So there's, you know, so many options I have now to continue to use my favorite classic desktops. You know, the more options, the better. <laughs> you notice there's any like performance issues or differences when you're using it, Jill? Um, with with X Wayland, yes, there are sometimes sometimes, especially um, like for instance, I'm using OBS. Sometimes there's a little bit of a slowdown with it, uh, but it's so minuscule that you don't notice it. I mean, it's so mm, okay. th- there'll be like maybe like a half second, you know, pause that I wasn't getting before. <laughs> 
Gotcha. gotcha. And also, yeah. this is, with X Whalen and, and the Wayback, they're going to be different implementations of how these kind of these things are done. But with yeah. Wayback, it's being it's very early stages. It's experimental, but also it's not just a project to be made for the sake of being made. It's also being made with a purpose of being a replacement solution for Alpine Linux because Alpine is uh, one of those that de- one of those de- desktop projects that is you know built to do multiple different uh, configurations like it was i'm pretty sure it started as like a container based system and now they've they've introduced desktop and stuff like that so being able to still have uh, support for x11 stuff would be good for that kind of thing and i think this is a, a fascinating project and i think there's so much potential to make so many people happy about this because you can still have all the stuff you want with x because the the thing about x wayland is a lot of people were worried about not being able to you know, have their DEs that they wanted because X Whaling was not necessarily exclusively focused on applications, but it was mostly talked about in the application space. And having something like this where you can keep both, that sounds perfect. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. And, you know, if you want to contribute uh, to Wayback, uh, you can do that via pull requests on their GitHub repository. That, that would be a fun project to contribute to if you can. Yeah, Absolutely. It's- a great way to give back to uh and sometimes if you're not a coder there is you know documentation there's all kinds of different things even project management sometimes of bugs and things or organization there's all kinds of ways you can contribute so if you're very passionate about this then go check that out and get involved did this video whet your open source appetite then you'll love watching the full episode. We covered even more Linux goodness and so much more. You don't want to miss it. So go here to watch the latest episode of Destination Linux.